Here at the highest point of Mount Herzl, the grave of modern Israel's most famous founder overlooks Jerusalem and the nation he fought so hard for the Jews to once again possess. Theodore Herzl, a refined Jewish gentleman living in Europe, saw a growing hatred of Jews in the late 1800s and feared the prejudice would never end. That's when he realized God's chosen people needed a safer place to live and sought to take them back to their sacred homeland. Imagine where the Jewish people were 125 years ago, broken, lost, wandering, homeless. And this guy with piercing black eyes and a beautiful black beard and a real sense of dignity says, we are a people, we have ties to a particular homeland and the right to establish a state on that homeland, Zionism. We're gonna to return to Zion. In an effort to keep Israel's history alive for new generations, professor and Jerusalem Post commentator Gil Troy has edited the three volume Zionist writings of Theodore Herzl. He saw that at a time when the French were becoming more French and the Italians were becoming more Italian, and there was this amazing thing called America coming together, that it was a moment of nationalism. And in order for the Jews to be accepted, truly accepted, truly respected, they needed their own home. Unfortunately, there was this ugly disease called anti-Semitism, which too many Europeans couldn't get over. It traumatized Herzl. And he said, wait a minute, I'm not gonna give in to despair, although he has his dark moments. I'm not gonna give up. I'm gonna find a way home. Herzl, a journalist and playwright, wrote of a strong, confident new breed of people establishing this Jewish homeland. The idea must wing its ways into the most remote, miserable holes where our people dwell. They will awaken from their gloomy torpor. Then, activated, a generation of marvelous Jews will spring into existence. He lobbied world leaders and assembled Jews from all over to Basel, Switzerland for the first World Zionist Congress. That set off a powerful Zionist movement and led to a prophecy. August 29th, 1897, he calls together 208 Jews and by the way says, meet in formal dress because we're dignified people. We're not losers. And he says, after that Congress, and he puts it in his diaries, but he won't put it in public. He says, nobody's gonna believe me, but in Basel we found the, the Jewish state and 50 years from now, people are gonna see that I'm right. And indeed, 50 years later, the United Nations on November 29th, 1947, voted to recognize that Zionist idea that the Jews are a people, they have ties to a particular homeland and the right to establish a state on that homeland. And a year later, so 51 years later, May 1948, Israel was established. And so he really was a prophet. Activists began to push for a Jewish homeland and thousands began moving to what the Bible called the Promised Land. The Jews had been scattered from here some 1300 years before. And though many believe their ancient homeland to be lost forever, Herzl had faith. Here's this guy leading this broken, scattered people, but he believes in the power of an idea. He believes that ideas are the force that can move history. Ideas are the a force that can reunite people. Although Herzl died in 1904, his influence helped lead to the 1917 Balfour Declaration, which endorsed the idea of a national home for the Jewish people in Palestine. Herzl's dream was well on its way to fruition. He'd always believed if you push hard enough, a dream, an idea, could become a reality. He wrote that this particular dream of a Jewish return to Zion must be made real. It is as old as our people, which has never, even in times of direst misery, ceased to cherish it. The Jewish state is something the world needs and consequently it will come into being. And it has.